Hi, this is Rob Graham, Director of Training at Learning Craft, and today I wanted to show you some more things that you can do with buttons using Flash, and really hopefully knock down some of the barriers that are preventing you from getting involved in some of the interactive development that you can do using this product. Today what I want to do is just show you some things we can do with buttons to really kind of a practical use, make it easy for you. And I want to start by showing you what we're going to be creating initially here. And if you look up here on the stage, I have a map of New England, the northeastern part of the United States where I live. and I want to make this into an interactive map of sorts. I want to be able to roll over the individual states and maybe learn something about them, depending on what kind of information I want to share with my users. Now, one of the problems we would have had historically with a model like this is if we had wanted to create an interactive map of New England and wanted to put buttons over each one of the states, the old joke was you can have any shape you want as long as it's rectangular. And now the problem with a map like this is you can imagine if we start throwing rectangles over the state of Maine, for example, it's going to overlap into its neighboring states and being able to put a rectangle on an odd shape here, everything's going to overlap. And it made it very complicated, of course, to be able to demarcate where the individual states were. Well, the nice thing about Flash is that it makes it very easy to avoid that. Let me show you what this looks like when it runs. And here we have the states that make up the New England states of the United States. And as I roll over each one of these, I have the opportunity to home in on each individual state and only that state. So it understands when I roll over it that I intend to choose that state as well as be able to highlight and focus in on it. Well, how are we doing this? Well, if you want to follow along with this at home, feel free to come to our website at www.learningcraft.com forward slash flash kits forward slash and in this case, it's called newengland.zip, okay, newengland.zip, and that will provide you with the files that you need to follow along. And all that's really in this file is this map of New England. So I'm going to start my project by going to the library and dragging the map onto the stage. I'm just going to stick it here pretty much in the center of the stage. And what I want to do now is I want to figure out how I can take the information in this graphic and use it so that I can create interactive buttons out of it. Well, to begin with, the first thing I want to do is I want to go in here and I want to break this image apart so that I can go in and start to select individual portions of it. Right now, Flash sees this as a single object, and as I move it around, it will move around everything at once. So if I go and select this object by clicking on it, I can now go to my Modify menu, and I can select Break Apart, or I can hit Control b if I'm working on a PC, Option-B if I'm working on a Macintosh. And what this does is it takes this graphic and it breaks it into basically its component parts. What this allows me to do now is go in and select individual areas. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Lasso tool for this, and while it's not very intuitive, by selecting the Lasso tool, I also have a feature here which gives me a magic wand. Now the magic wand allows me to go into an area and select things that are pretty much the same color, and this is going to be very handy for the map we're working on. Now fortunately there are good dividing lines in between each of these areas, so if I go here and click on the state of Maine, for example, what the tool will do is go in and select just that ink, or that portion of the graphic, which represents Maine. Now what I want to do is use this shape that I'm selecting to create a brand new button. I'm going to go and I'm just going to copy this. I'm hitting Control C to just copy this to my clipboard. And now since I know I want to create a button, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select the Insert menu. In the Insert menu, it gives me an option of going out and creating a new symbol. And that's exactly what I want to do. I want to create a new button symbol. So I'm going to select that. And in this case, I want to say Button. And let me just name my button. So I'm going to name this very quickly. This is Main and click OK. Now what this does is it takes me automatically into the timeline for the new button that I've opted to create. And what I can do now is if I paste what I have on my clipboard into this window, I now have this area for the state of Maine. Now this represents the upstate. This is what the end user will see sitting there on the stage. However, if I want to have this object highlight, let's say, when someone rolls over it, I can go over here to the overstate and I can select the artwork that's going to appear there. Now since the artwork I want to use is going to be very similar to what's already sitting here in the upframe, I can copy it so that I can just go in and maybe change its color. So in order to copy, the easiest way to do this is I can either go and right click here and I can say insert a keyframe and what that will do is it will go to the previous keyframe in the timeline right here and it just copies it forward to the new position. Now it's a matter of going down here and using my color selector going in and finding a color that I think will best represent the highlight, the overstate. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a button that if the user goes and rolls over it, it's going to automatically change colors by just changing the pictures that we see. That's what's going to happen when nobody touches it, and then when it's rolled over, you're going to see red.
Now in this instance, we really don't have a down state unless we were building a program in which you have to click on the button to have it go do something. I'm really just creating a map that you can roll over various elements. So in that case, I don't necessarily need to put in anything different than what I already have in the overstate. In fact, if I go in here once again and just right click and say insert keyframe, then I will just copy the red over. So if we roll over this map, it will turn red. If we click down on anything, it will still be red. It won't change to anything else. And then finally over here we have the hit area. And what the hit area allows us to do is to identify the boundaries of this button. Now, the state of Maine is a rather odd shape, and this would be a very hard thing for us to go out and figure out how to redraw. The good news is we don't have to. If I go in here and merely just copy that keyframe forward, then I will have a border. I will have boundaries which will identify what our button looks like. Now once again, I can right click on this and pull up the menu, or if I want to save myself a little time, I can go and press my F6 key, and that does the exact same thing. Okay, so all we really have here is an up state, which is blue in this case, and an over and a down state, which are red, and then the hit area is in the shape of the state of Maine. So now, let's go back to scene one by clicking here, and that takes us out of the button timeline and back to the master timeline. If we look over here in the library, we have a new button, which we've created, so we should know it was there. This should not be a horrible surprise to us, and it's the state of Maine. And I need to do a little prepping on my main timeline in order to use this button. What I have over here that's defaulted to layer one is when I brought the map in, it put it in there. So I'm just going to use this. I'm going to call it map. Double click here if you want to change the name of the layer. And there it is. Now I want to put my buttons on top of the map. I'm actually going to use the map as a way of helping me place the buttons accurately. So I want to create a brand new layer. And that's going to go up here on the top. And I'm just going to name this buttons. Okay. And now, by selecting this blank keyframe, if I go over here and pull out the main button, there it is. And now it's just a matter of going and positioning it onto the map that's already here. Now, you may find that sometimes things get a little sticky. The computer tries to force things into position. And that's because this guy here, Snap to Objects, is on. So if you want to avoid that, you can just click that off, and it makes it a lot easier to move things around. You can also use your arrow keys to to position items on the stage as well. And now we have the button sitting in its proper place. Now before we test this, let's go out quickly and make a new one. Once again, if I go in here and I use my lasso tool and my magic wand, I'm gonna click on the state of New Hampshire. And once again, I'm gonna copy that, go to insert new symbol, save it as a button. In this case, let me just call it New Hampshire and say, okay. If I paste it in here, I already have my upstate in position. Now if I go over here and I say F6 to copy this last keyframe forward, then I can go over here and I can say, hey, let's use that same color red. I'm going to do the same thing for the downstate. And the hit state for this particular object is going to be the shape of the state of New Hampshire. Go back to scene one, and it's really just a matter of repeating what I've done already. I'm going to go up to my buttons layer, make sure that that's selected, and go and take the New Hampshire button and position it right where it belongs. Let's go bring that up a little bit here and we should be in pretty good shape. You can always come in and tweak these things a little bit later but there we have. So we have two states in place. Now if I want to test my moving it's easy enough if I go to the controls I can go out here and I can either enable simple buttons which allow me to test this movie without actually going out and running it. I'll show you how that works and now when I come to something that's interactive the hand becomes an icon, and that icon rolls over. And as you can see, as we roll over New Hampshire and Maine, different things happen. So it's quite straightforward. Now we can also test this. Let me go in here to my controls once again. I'm going to toggle Enable Simple Buttons Off. We can also go in if we want to test this movie by running it to see what it would look like for the end user who is running it. We can go here and select Test Movie. Now we can also hit Control Enter, which is what we most commonly do. And what that does is it goes out and builds the SWIFT file for us. It takes what we have created in this flash file and it creates the file that would be used if we were to position it onto a website. So this is what our end user would see. And once again, if I roll over the various states, I get different effects. Now obviously this is a very simple example. What we would really do to enhance this is as I roll over each object, I get some information telling me about the state of Maine and where it's capital was perhaps, and all sorts of good things that happen in the state of Maine, as well as New Hampshire and Vermont. And this is Massachusetts, Connecticut, and the little one here is Rhode Island, for those of you who aren't familiar with American geography. 
So that's what I have for you now. And I will have future lessons that show once again how we can use some buttons to create some interesting effects. But as a basic overview, hopefully you'll find this useful and be able to apply it to some of your upcoming projects. And once again, if there's anything those of us at Learning Craft can do to help you out, please let us know. We provide training online and offline covering media development applications as well as provide expertise in online marketing technologies and campaign planning. And we're happy to help you out. Feel free to give us a call. You can find our information through our website at www.learningcraft.com. This is Rob Graham. Hope you have fun with this, and I'll see you again real soon.